what if Africa was never colonized? So, truth is, I actually came up with the premise of the story a few years ago, but I, for some reason, I decided to put it aside and then try something else, like try to do something else. So, bear with me if I don't have everything yet. I don't have all the names of the characters. I don't have everything in place, but I do have a rough idea. So, just give me a minute of your time and I'll explain everything to you. So, the story starts in... Uh, medieval times so during the time of the europeans coming into africa like the very first uh coming in through the east by the arabians and then by germans in the south so it story is a sort of combination of real life history and some fiction so there might be some overlap between some real stories and some that are not but then i do have a general idea which is the story starts in that time and it starts with the Zulu Empire in the south. So, at the time, they had a king uh, from the Zulu tribe. There's five tribe leaders, and then one of them becomes the king, finally. Uh, so, the king has a daughter, a princess, and a son as well. The princess is getting married to one of the sons of the other leader. So, there's a big wedding, huge wedding. Everyone's happy. Everyone's celebrating. And this king is, is highly respected. I mean, he has fought many battles for them. And not just being a good warrior, he's also... A good king so he's loved by his people people love him to love his children and his son of course is, is of age is about 20 he's vying to be king someday as well so he has to earn that right because unlike uh, other parts of africa at that time you need to earn the right to be king you don't just become king because you're the son of the king that's not how you work you need to earn the right that's why there are five tribes and one of them eventually would become king or one of their children so there's a big wedding uh, King's daughter is about to get married. While this is going on, while the celebrations are going on, everyone's feasting, everyone's dancing, there's music. One of the guards notice a light coming from the river bank. And then before he knows what's happening, he gets an arrow to his eyes, like straight in the eye. And of course he's dead. Uh, it doesn't take time before people notice that they, they are being attacked. And, and guess who is attacking? Is the German. But they don't bring their entire empire, they bring a small group of soldiers, let's say 500 to 1,000 soldiers just try to attack and see if they can take the entire empire. Of course they, they lose because the Zulu empire is fierce, powerful warriors. And then back then all we had were spears and knives, but then we knew how to use that stuff like crazy. So of course the Germans lose and they escape. The Germans, just to point out, do have guns. They have some serious weapons but then those things first of all are expensive they're, they're not produced in mass the way they are now they're really exp they were really expensive back then so they were reserved for only serious battles like when okay fine we, we we are going out to kill now we are going out to win that's when they really bring out big guns that sort of thing so they sent out they sent out a small group of soldiers to the southern part of africa, africa to try to see if or oh, can we come in so this was sort of the very first not the very first but then as far as the Zulu Empire I knew the very first point of entry for the Europeans so there was a lot of confusion oh yeah and I forgot they managed to kill <laughs> the king at this time so the king is dead the Zulu people are mourning their king and they are thinking what's going on what just happened who are these people what do they want everyone is lost everyone is looking for answers of course we know now because we we are like a few years in time ahead of time sorry but then th those guys don't know what's going on they're wondering why are these people here what do they want who are these people what why is their color of skin different why do they talk different all of this, th so many questions running their mind so the son of the prince let's let's call him kwame for now just <laughs> so kwame the son of the king is 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 i think I, i'd compare him to alexander the great in terms of being very explorative in his head he he likes to he's curious he's very curious he likes to seek answers to questions so while everyone is thinking fine the king is dead now we need a new king kwame is thinking we have bigger problems than just having a king or, or going through all the rights or the entire process because it's the entire process of picking a king we don't have time for all those things and right now we are all we don't know when next we're going to be attacked so we need to find answers and that's what Kwame just says to everyone the entire tribe everyone and they all agreed they saw some sense in it we all need to find some answers so Kwame suggested that they 
travel east to the east of Africa to Ethiopia. At the time, it wasn't known as Ethiopia, but then to the east of Africa, Ethiopia, where there's a, a great king, and he would probably have answers, and of course have an army that can help them out as well, because the, the Germans seemed very fierce when when he came out, and they, they, the Zulu Empire didn't want to wait to find out how much more soldiers they had or how competent the soldiers were. So they, they first of all wanted to seek answers, and secondly went out to seek help, like have people join them and fight this people trying to take their land. So Kwame heads east and then <sighs> Ethiopia Ethiopia is different. Ethiopia was was, was different at I see. For the very first time Kwame saw some of the most beautiful women you will ever see in your life. I'm I'm talking people straight out of the sea. <laughs> that sort of thing. So Kwame is intrigued by the land. And something else that intrigues Kwame is the fact that it was cold somewhat in the east compared to the south. I mean, you get some parts that are really cold, but then it was really cold in some parts of it to the point where they had to build, they had to build structures on the ground just to keep warm, that sort of thing. And it was some amazing architecture at that time to have structures structures underneath, just like uh, insects do. So it was really an eye candy for Kwame because he's very curious. He just wanted to travel and see things and seek answers to questions. So they meet with uh, the Ethiopian king, great king, by the way. It's all these great structures he had and all these beautiful women, all of these things. I mean, there's more to it, but I'm just trying to like break everything down into tiny pieces. So the great king listens to all Kwame had to say. Kwame told his story, told him how they were attacked and the king is dead, his father is dead and all of those things. And the king immediately told him that wasn't the first time something like that happened. And then it was, it was shocking to everyone because according to what they knew, that was the first of those attacks. They had never seen any. So according to the great king in Ethiopia, Arabians had been coming in for years, like long, long before that happened. Secondly, he did mention that the Europeans coming in was the least of their problems at this time. So let me explain. At this time, the greatest, I mean, the greatest civilization, greatest army in the world, not just Africa, was in Egypt. The heart of Africa was in Egypt. The heart of the world was in Egypt. The Ethiopian king told Kwame that they had bigger problems than just the Europeans tried to use it. And then Kwame was like, oh, what do you mean? How, how is this possible? He explained to him that the pharaoh of Egypt was trying to take the entire Africa and make it one country. So let me explain. Let me divert from this part of the story and move to a different part. So somewhere in the West, Benin Empire. I'm Nigerian, of course, so we, we have to mention our people. The Benin Empire are having a feast. And guess who they are feasting with? They are feasting with the Portuguese. So a Portuguese general is feasting with the, the Oba of Benin. They are having time of their lives. They are laughing. There's gold everywhere. There's gold chest. He's being bribed all the way. And then all of a sudden, there's an attack. Arrows flying everywhere. People are dying. What's happening? And then people find out it's the prince or pharaoh of Egypt, as it's called. He comes in, of course, completely destroys the Portuguese. No one is left. I mean, he kills every single one of the Portuguese, all the generals, all the soldiers. Like, very easy. Very, very easy. It's not even a competition because <laughs> we'll get to it at some point. But in Egypt, was <laughs> was a massive, massive, massive empire. So... The pharaoh of Egypt, just for namesake, let's call him Ramses. Ramses takes out all the Portuguese and then he decides to talk to the Mali, sorry, the, sorry, the uh, Oba of Benin directly. And in his words, of course, he had to translate or find some translator to, but you get what I mean. So in his words, he's, he, this is the pharaoh talking to the Oba of Benin. In his words, your ancestors would be turning in their graves right now seeing you sit and feast and dine with these foreigners like they are your own people so the pharaoh of egypt is upset he's livid 
at everyone trying to embrace the Europeans. And his end goal is to unite Africa, make Africa one single country. And the only way to do this at the time was through conquest. Same way Alexander the Great did, same way Napoleon did, same way he colonized that So his plan is to make Africa one country, conquer the West, conquer the Ethiopians in the East, and then down the South. And the reason why he wanted to have all of Africa be one was so he noticed that the Europeans were trying to come in. The Arabians, the Europeans, everyone was trying to come into Africa because we had so many resources. We had all of this land and so many things to ex exploit here in Africa. The Pharaoh of Egypt wanted to unite Africa so he could have a large enough army to take the fight to them first. So let me explain what this means. It means, imagine not just having the massive empire of, of, of Egypt at the time and the civilizations, the civilization they had at that point, having Ethiopia behind you as well, having the Zulu Empire, having the Oba of Benin and the entire Benin Empire, every single kingdom of Africa as one and everyone fighting as one army against the Europeans. This is what the Pharaoh of Egypt wanted to do. But then, where this guy became a villain was how he planned to do it because the only way all of Africa was going to bow before the Pharaoh of Egypt was through conquest. They were not going to bow down to anyone else. And then every tribe, every group, every part of Africa had their own leaders and these leaders were very, very stubborn people. They were not going to bow to the Pharaoh of Egypt just because he wanted an army to fight the Europeans. But then he did have an idea of taking the fight to the Europeans. So this is a bigger problem, the king of Ethiopia was was saying they had a, a fight to they had a battle in Africa of course the Europeans were coming of course there was fight coming from the outside but then they had to fight this battle first so to the rest of the story we will get to that in another video right now I'm still trying to piece everything together but then this is the sort of a premise to the story and I I do have more in my head I'm still trying to Put together but I, I hope you enjoyed it i hope it, it did make sense to you and uh maybe i'll see you in the next video